Today I'm going to show you how I replace some pads on a saxophone. Over time the saxophone pads will get dirty and they'll even get hard and uh, brittle. And then they begin to leak. Here's a few tools you're going to need. This is a pad uh, pricking punch and pliers. And this is a crochet hook that I use to hook up springs with. Put a little notch in the end of it right there. And that's glue on that stick. There's a razor blade and we've got the pad leveling tool, screwdrivers. There's another kind of a leveling tool. And you may need a rawhide mallet. So I have some pads that have gone bad and they've started to leak on this old saxophone. And the one I'm going to change is in the upper stack. And uh, it's pretty bad, it's pretty brittle and uh, leaking quite badly. So this is a leak light. And the idea is you can put it down through the inside of the saxophone and the light uh, comes out through the hole there. And when you hold your, your pad down, you can see if, it's, if there's light showing, like right there, means you've got a pretty bad leak. So I go through and I check my pads that uh, might be related to the uh, problem here. And you can see the light coming out of that uh, bigger pad right there also. Right in that spot right there. So there's a small leak. And all of these leaks add up to uh, big problems when you go to play the saxophone. So today we're going to take the keys off the saxophone and uh, take those old pads out change them. Now the lower stack is in pretty good shape on the lower part of the saxophone. So step one is take out this long screw that they've got that shoves through all of the keys. So you pull pull this long screw out and all of the keys will just fall right off. I've gone ahead and, um, and unhooked all my springs. You want to do that first before you pull that long screw out. Here we go, kind of gently uh, pull it till I get it all the way out there. And all of these little uh, keys will come off. Now I'm going to have to loosen up another um, rod in order to get the keys out of the upper stack. So we'll take this little screw out. Sometimes there's a long, long screw, sometimes it's just a little short screw that holds things together. So there we've got that little screw out. Now there's the pad that we're going to change. So we begin to take off the keys to get at the ones you need to uh, re replace the pads in. And once you get the keys off you can uh, inspect the pad and you can see it's pretty um, dark and it's got a bunch of gunk on it. There's the new pad right there. You can see the difference. So next we're going to start up our Bunsen burner here and we'll heat this uh, key up and then pluck that pad out of there. You put these pads in with a, a shellac which you heat up and so you have to heat up the um, the key in order to get the old pad out. So there we go. We've got the old one out. Now we're going to heat that key up on, so that when I touch the shellac to it, it will uh, melt onto that key. So there we go. I've got it hot enough and got some glue in there. I use a little wooden peg here to. Uh, press the pad down in so it's seated evenly on the key. So now I've looked things over and I've I found a couple other pads that I might as well change while I've got the saxophone apart. So there's another one that's uh, pretty bad. So the same story. We've got to be careful on this key because there's a, there's a pearl right there. So you don't want to put the heat directly on that. You'll melt the pearl. So you've got to hold that thing so that uh, you protect that pearl as you heat that key up 
just to the point where you can lift that pad out of there. So the same story, we just reheat the uh, key and this time I'll hold it with a pair of pliers by the uh, pearl. I kind of slant that up a little bit so that the heat is, is directed away from that pearl. And there we go, we get the next pad seated down into that glue. And here's a third one. This one's on a long rod, so it's a little bit easier to hold on to as we heat it up, but we still have to be careful of that pearl. So we apply the heat and direct it away from the pearl. Get it, get it heated up enough, and that pad will lift right up out of there. So once again, we heat it back up, apply some of our shellac glue here, and stick the new pad in. So now it's time to reassemble the saxophone. It's quite amazing the engineering that's gone into these saxophones, and so all those parts will fit back in. You just have to be patient and, uh, and get everything lined up. Then this long rod, you start right at the top and start feeding it down through each of the keys in that upper stack. So that one rod holds all the keys on. So here we go, we're just gently lining things up and shoving the rod down through. I took a class at college for instrument repair and it was one of the, the best classes I took to be prepared to uh, teach instrumental music in the uh, public schools. There's a lot of repairing that uh, has to be done on the kids' instruments and it's kind of nice if you know how to, how to do some of these things. So we've almost got the rod completely through all of the keys. And once we get those, get that rod down so we can screw it in, the next step is to hook up all the springs. So there we go. Now we can screw that rod in. And you tighten it all the way down until it's tight, and then back it off just a little bit. And I'm checking to make sure all the keys are moving freely. And of course the springs aren't hooked up yet, so they just they just flop back and forth. So right there you can see the spring. It's a little needle spring. So this is where that crochet hook comes in. I took a file and put a little notch in the end of that crochet hook so I can push on the spring and hook it back up. So you go down through and uh, hook up all those springs that operate all the keys. And of course with a crochet hook you can you can either push with that with that uh, crease that I filed in the end of the crochet hook or you can hook onto it with a hook and, and pull on the spring to hook it up. There you can see how the keys rebound. There we've got them all hooked back up. Now the next step is to uh, check with the leak light again and usually you're going to have to do some adjustment uh, on these keys to get them uh, so they work together and they don't leak. And for some strange reason this time I, I put the uh, pads in there and uh, check with the leak light and everything seems real good. There's several keys that work together. You press, you press one key down and it closes two keys. So you have to make sure that, that those keys are uh, both seating both pads as you press it down. And I usually sit down here and I'll uh, stick that leak light down through the top. And this way I can look at both sides of the pads and make sure there's no leaks as I go along. 
So I'm checking that one side. Now we look around to the other side. Everything looks great. So when the saxophone doesn't have any leaks, uh, it plays real smoothly and sounds great. I've been playing the saxophone now for over 40 years and this is the only tenor saxophone that I've ever owned. I bought this saxophone back in the early 70s and it's a Buescher Aristocrat. And through the years people have said, boy we like the sounds of that saxophone, what, what kind is it? And when I tell them it's a, a student model Buescher, they can hardly believe it. And a lot of people have, have said to me, why don't you go out and buy a new professional model saxophone? Well, the new saxophones just don't have the same sound as these old saxophones do. And so I've stuck with this one all these years.